This is the oldest world map created 3,000 years ago. Babylonians sincerely thought that they lived on a flat land surrounded by a vast ocean in the middle of a symmetrical seven-pointed star. They were sure that the world could be anything but pure and proportional. And today, we know it really looked like that in the very first moments after the Big Bang. It was a glowing sphere evenly filled with energy. But then, some mysterious processes made everything way more complicated. More than 13 billion years later, our universe is a disorderly network of galactic clusters that scatter in all directions, while at the micro level, weird quantum particles demonstrate very contradictory properties. Despite this, modern scientists follow the steps of Babylon's brightest minds and keep proposing their harmonious and systematic theories to define how the universe works at every level. But as soon as they begin thinking that they're close to the truth, a problem occurs and ruins the perfection of physical formulas. What if it happens not because our science is faulty? What if it's a sign of slowly upcoming chaos? Could it be that we live in a short period of time when the laws of physics still apply on this planet and let us exist? What is our universe actually ruled by? Symmetry or chaos? And will we manage to unveil its hidden rules before it's too late? We realized that the universe is broken not so long ago. Only some 500 years ago, most scholars were sure that the Earth was located in the heart of outer space and that the Sun and other planets revolved around it. This pretty geocentric model had just one flaw. To explain the orbits of other planets from Earth's perspective, scientists had to agree that it made erratic and irregular movements. The heliocentric model by Nicholas Copernicus was accepted mainly because it made those orbits much simpler to understand. Once the Sun was placed in the center, all other celestial bodies suddenly began drifting around in perfect circles. In 1595, German mathematician Johannes Kepler was trying to find a way to describe the planet's orbits and put an end to the controversy. And suddenly, the answer hit him like a train. Back then, astronomers only knew about five planets besides Earth, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And that was a perfect match to five classic three-dimensional figures, platonic solids. Kepler discovered that if they're inserted one into another, we'll get six circular orbits, just like those in the solar system. Quote, The intense pleasure I perceive from this discovery can never be told in words, Kepler wrote in his diary. Soon, however, his flawless model collided with chaotic reality. Mars stubbornly refused to follow the calculated circular orbit. It was either ahead or behind schedule. With a heavy heart, Kepler threw his logical model into the trash and started calculating all over again. As a result, he came up with new laws of planetary motion. The first of them states that planets move around the Sun in ellipses, and the Sun is not at the center, but at a focal point of this elliptical orbit. However, this didn't fully explain some minor oddities, such as Mercury's curious orbit. Only accurate astronomical observations made in the 20th century helped astronomers determine that planets don't even revolve around the Sun all in a single plane. In fact, each orbit is tilted around one degree, while Mercury's tilt reaches almost two. Kepler's jaw would definitely drop open if he could see that. The solar system turned out to be much less symmetrical than he had hoped. The good news is that all of its quirks were finally explained later when Einstein developed the general theory of relativity. Coherent, precise, and simply beautiful. In fact, it proved to be so universally good that scientists started to believe it could be applied anywhere and answer all their questions. They hoped it would even clear up the structure of atoms because they looked like tiny solar systems. But when, in 1925, Werner Heisenberg tried to make use of Einstein's formulas while calculating the orbit of an electron, he ended up with a bunch of nonsense. 
the electron was supposed to fall into the atomic nucleus within seconds, meaning that if Einstein was right, all matter in the universe had to immediately break down. Heisenberg and later other physicists like Erwin Schrödinger realized that it's simply impossible to accurately determine all parameters of elementary particles, and an atom actually looks like a chaotic cloud of probable positions of the electron and nucleus. This was how quantum mechanics appeared. Its conceptual framework is called quantum field theory. Until the end of his life, Einstein hoped he'd managed to unify it with his general theory of relativity. But despite the efforts of the most prominent scientists, our universe still seems to be split into two asymmetrical parts. Macro phenomena, like the movement of planets and galaxies, are consistent with the theory of relativity, while the microworld of particles is governed by quantum field theory. And if you try to make them work together, the only answer all formulas will give you is infinite numbers. And that's an absolute nightmare for physicists. At the same time, scientists found a pleasing fundamental symmetry at the core of quantum field theory. Charge, parity, and time symmetry. Simply put, if you reverse the charges of all particles, reflect them in a mirror, or make them travel back in time, the laws of quantum mechanics must stay the same. It would be frustrating to discover that even these symmetries don't work. However, that's exactly what new experiments conducted in the mid-20th century and later showed us. And again, the perfection of theory started losing against the chaos of reality. But what makes the fundamental symmetries of the universe so important to physicists and all of us? At first, even Einstein's groundbreaking theory of relativity brought a hefty dose of confusion into the world because back in the day, it undermined the foundation of physics, the law of conservation of energy. We know that something can't come from nothing or disappear into nowhere. But when astronomers began taking pictures of faraway galaxies, they saw not bright stellar disks like the Andromeda Galaxy, but some blurry red blobs. As predicted by the general theory of relativity, while moving across the universe, their photons lost energy and made them redshift. Einstein's contemporaries were really puzzled to see the law of energy conservation suddenly fail. The mystery was solved by German mathematician Emmy Noether. In 1915, she became the first scientist in history to link the symmetries of the universe and the conservation laws. For example, when you play pool, you expect to easily pocket a ball by making another ball hit it. If you're an experienced player and feel that the hit was too soft or too hard, you'll instantly want to check if the table is slanted. In other words, does its surface lie symmetrically to the ground? Emmy Noether realized that this space symmetry gives the conservation of momentum, which is precisely what lets you make precise shots and win a game of pool. For the same reason, a ball thrown into outer space will endlessly go in one direction until it runs into some obstacle. As for the space station where you were standing when throwing that ball, it stays in orbit due to the rotational symmetry of spherical Earth that lets its satellites conserve their angular momentum and not fall. Finally, it doesn't matter when exactly you hit the pool ball or send it into outer space. Do it today, do it next week, and you'll always get the same result. This time symmetry, according to Noether's theorem, implies the energy conservation law. Although, on a global scale, the present-day universe is different from its past self. The constant and increasingly chaotic expansion makes its shape more and more asymmetrical. Therefore, the conservation law works fine on symmetrical Earth, but becomes unreliable in the asymmetrical universe and makes photons from its distant corners lose energy. Albert Einstein himself called Emmy Noether a creative genius for this insight and for discovering that each symmetry is linked to a certain conservation law. Several decades later, her ideas were adopted by physicists engaged in creating a new quantum field theory. 
Little did they know that chaos was going to mess up their neat formulas too. Back in the mid-19th century, Michael Faraday proved the law of conservation of electric charge. And only a century later, it became apparent that, thanks to Noether's theorem, it's also based on the concept of symmetry. Every charged particle creates electromagnetic waves around itself. In whatever phase you choose as a starting point, low or high, the formulas will be the same, and the particle will hold its charge. That phase symmetry lets scientists add the much-needed charge symmetry to the quantum field theory because you can juggle with minuses and pluses all you want, but the charge will behave the same way. Another basic property named parity symmetry seemed crystal clear, so theorists decided it needed no proof. If you mirror even the entire universe, most people will become lefties, most cities on Earth will switch to left-hand traffic, and the hands of the clock will move in the opposite direction. But they'll be ticking just the same, won't they? And both people and cars will continue to do what they did, right? Well, to everyone's surprise, this lady, Chinese-American physicist Qian Sheng Wu, shattered parity symmetry in 1956. Or rather, she became the first scientist in history to establish that this fundamental property of the universe is already distorted by chaos. Wu put unstable cobalt atoms in multi-directional magnetic fields and, with parity symmetry in mind, expected them to release electrons in two opposite directions during decay. But in reality, the electrons chose to move only in one direction once they left the cobalt atoms. Wu ran the experiment over and over again, but weak interaction that controlled the decay of atoms had zero intention to obey parity symmetry, just like electromagnetism and gravitation. This unexpected attack on the beautiful quantum field theory shook the whole scientific world to the core. It seemed that the laws of physics were collapsing like a house of cards. In a desperate attempt to fix the situation, some researchers assumed that even though parity symmetry was violated, combined charge parity symmetry had to be working. Otherwise, they'd need to rewrite all principles of quantum mechanics. But the most startling conclusion from Wu's experiment is the following. The universe that cosmologists tend to see roughly identical in all directions can, after all, have inner spatial orientation. It's like if Earth were not a nearly perfect sphere, but an elongated, spindle-shaped planet. In 2020, an Australian team of scientists from the University of New South Wales carefully examined the light from very distant quasars located 13 billion light years away from us and concluded that the laws of electromagnetism and the place where this light's coming from are somewhat different from those we're used to. The distinction is so subtle that, at first, the scientific world refused to acknowledge it. But now, it's impossible to deny the obvious. This means our universe is broken even more than we could imagine, as some of its parts are strikingly different from the neighboring areas, or maybe as time goes by, the conditions uncontrollably change everywhere. But what if one day Earth gets trapped in a region where the laws of physics have nothing to do with ours? What unpredictable consequences would it have? However, asymmetrical phenomena aren't always disastrous for science or the world itself. How did breaking the principal symmetry of the universe create all of us? In the 1920s, one physicist saw gross symmetry violation in Einstein's super Elgin formula we know so well, E equals mc squared. It described completely stationary matter, while electrons race across orbitals just like some little subatomic fighter jets. That's why the scientist decided to restore symmetry. His name was Paul Dirac the author of an equally elegant equation that brilliantly described the electron's motion in two conflicting ways simultaneously, using Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. Although quite soon, Dirac noticed that his formula revealed a new and quite unwelcome symmetry. 
According to his formula, electrons can have both positive and negative energy, which sounds absurd. Despite this, Dirac was so proud of the equation and its effortless beauty that he published it anyway, changing physics forever. Soon after that, American scientist Carl David Anderson studied cosmic rays and discovered that very positively charged electron, positron. The symmetry of charge gave it a surprising property. Upon colliding with a regular electron, both particles got annihilated and turned into energy, a gamma ray burst. That was how, with the help of his pretty formula, Paul Dirac predicted the existence of a new universal symmetry, antimatter. Further experiments showed that it's no different from ordinary matter except for its charges. Since both substances were produced from pure energy, antimatter was supposed to create the same stars and galaxies. But over the decades of space observations, astronomers have managed to detect only some handfuls of antimatter. Today, it looks like our universe is completely composed of regular substances. But the verdict that seems natural and self-evident to us is just another nightmare for physicists, as it causes even more havoc and confusion. The unsolved problem of matter-antimatter asymmetry. In the first moments after the Big Bang, when our universe was in its primitive state, there was no matter at all. It was a dense environment, not larger than an atom. Various pairs of particles and antiparticles appeared there now and again, only to annihilate themselves and turn back into energy. And even one second after the Big Bang, when our universe expanded enough and cooled off a bit, protons, antiprotons, electrons, and positrons that appeared from energy had to meet again and destroy each other in gamma ray bursts. But 90 seconds after the Big Bang, the universe looked nothing like a radioactive cloud. It was full of ordinary matter, while antimatter seemingly vanished. Scientists estimated that it takes only one collision between particles and antiparticles with symmetry violation to produce the amount of ordinary matter we currently observe in outer space. That was how the intervention of chaos literally created our world. Even though scholars still have no idea why it happened and what exactly could erase all antimatter. And if the universe is bound to return to the even balance of the two elements sooner or later, does it mean we'll be at risk of annihilation too? In 1964, American physicists James Cronin and Val Fitch conducted an experiment that brought scientists closer to unlocking the secret of the matter-antimatter asymmetry. But at the same time, it suddenly disrupted quantum field theory. Cronin and Fitch ran tests with beams of two types of kaons, extremely exotic elementary particles composed of both matter and antimatter. The scientists had long noticed that kaons 1 decay 100 times faster than kaons 2. This means if you mix them up in a relatively long beam, the detector on the other side will spot only the more long-lasting kaons 2. In the end, this experiment threw the researchers into confusion. What actually made it out was kaons 1, even though they were supposed to disintegrate in the beam long before reaching the detector. There could be only one explanation. At some point, kaons 2 spontaneously and chaotically transformed into kaons 1. The good news was that this symmetry breaking could well clarify where a large part of antimatter disappeared in the early universe. It spontaneously turned into regular substances. However, from the perspective of quantum field theory the experiments were based on, it was a catastrophe. The discovery meant that erratic transformations of kaons violated combined charge parity symmetry that scientists previously had great hopes for. The experiment with kaons showed that if we mirror all particles in our universe and reverse their charges, thus making them similar to antimatter, the laws of physics will significantly change, as if chaos attacked the world once again. At the time, scientists had one last card to play and save quantum field theory, time symmetry. Although 
In truth, right after Cronin and Fitch finished their experiment, theorists faced yet another fundamental problem. The God particle wreaked havoc in the micro world of elementary particles. It was first mentioned by British theoretical physicist Peter Higgs in the same year, 1964. The scientific community then developed the very elegant standard model of elementary particles. There was just one catch. Although they had to be absolutely weightless according to calculations, experiments proved that the bosons of the very asymmetrical weak nuclear integration have masses. But how? Peter Higgs was the first to suggest that as they move, these and some other particles experience resistance of an unknown field that permeates the whole universe. That's like walking against a strong wind when it feels like you're getting heavier with every step. The boson of the Higgs universal field fit in the standard model so well that after brief discussions, it was placed right in its center and jokingly named the God Particle. That was the moment when its existence was going to determine the fate of quantum mechanics, and scientists had a hard time searching for the Higgs boson until they finally succeeded. Only on July 4, 2012, two research teams at the Large Hadron Collider announced the discovery of the God particle. It turned out to have a very short lifetime and be around 130 times heavier than a proton. The latter details somewhat ruined the festive party mood at the collider that day. Everyone knew that, while interacting with other particles and giving them mass, the Higgs boson undergoes just the same process and gets heavier, meaning its mass should be way larger than the experiment showed. It's as if astronomers were searching for a moon-sized object in the sky and found only a space shuttle instead. Now what? Does it mean the standard model of elementary particles is plunging into chaos and stopping functioning properly? Physicists didn't give up and decided to fire their favorite weapon, the elegant and classy theory of supersymmetry. It expands the standard model of elementary particles to at least twice its size, turning it into some sort of a mandala. It seems to have a lot in common with that Babylonian map of the world, doesn't it? What's really important is that all those additional particles interact with the ones we already know instead of the Higgs boson and therefore remove the lion's share of its mass, a very neat solution. But that's not all. Studying this huge menagerie of particles, experts easily found candidates to take up the position of the mysterious dark matter that fills the entire universe. Moreover, the new particles could shed light on the nature of gravity and the way physical powers combined in the first moments after the Big Bang. Sounds like hitting the jackpot in several fields of physics all at once. That's why, right after the discovery of the God Particle, scientists started zealously looking for proof of this divine supersymmetry in the LHC collisions. Alas, as of 2023, experts experimentally proved that most super partners with the calculated masses don't exist. And even if they do, they've got to be much heavier. And if it doesn't cancel the theory of supersymmetry, it at least disfigures its beauty. Some theorists who aren't ready to give it up assume that supersymmetry existed a long time ago but, for some reason, fell apart over billions of years following the Big Bang. And although scientists hope to find its fragments with the help of future colliders able to achieve even higher energy, right now all models of the world of elementary particles look downright incomplete. But what about our last hope, quantum field theory? Even though time symmetry is apparently broken on the scale of the universe due to expansion, it was supposedly preserved at the elementary particle level. After all, you can create a particle and an antiparticle out of energy and then, as if turning back the clock, make them hit each other and produce new energy. Physicists kept testing this symmetry until they finally ran into trouble. At the time when traces of the Higgs boson were discovered at the Large Hadron Collider, scientists conducted a series of experiments devoted to B mesons at the Stanford Linear Accelerator. Just like kaons, they constantly switch between two types. 
Actually, researchers initiated these tests to study the matter-antimatter asymmetry problem, but instead, they unexpectedly found time symmetry violations. Although quantum field theory explicitly stated that B mesons had to transform into each other within equal time intervals, in reality, one of the processes ended much sooner. That's like a pendulum that needs one second to swing right and three seconds to swing left. In other words, even the quantum flow of time in the universe turned out to be broken. So, is this the end? Has chaos won? Now it looks like all basic symmetries in our world are violated. Charge, parity, and time. Here lies the paradox, is these problems occur separately. They, so to say, cancel each other and make the combined charge parity time symmetry possible. Meaning that a universe where all charges are simultaneously reversed and all particles are mirrored and sent back in time has to act exactly like ours. I guess the quantum field theory is in the clear now, but for how long? In recent years, scientists have tested charge parity and time symmetry in different exotic particle interactions. So far, the symmetry shows no signs of breaking. But even though quantum field theory is still incompatible with general relativity and our universe is still split into two parts, it's good to know that at least the microworld is saved from total chaos. I mean, for now. Who knows, maybe new particle accelerators will give us not a pretty brand new theory we're so desperate to find, but distort our universe even more. Do you think we'll ever tame chaos around us and streamline at least one of our theories? Or will the laws of physics irrevocably change and just destroy us?